This is what we're discussing solving inequalities algebraically and graphically. Now, the methods for solving inequalities parallel the methods for solving equations. Here are two basic rules we apply to solve absolute value inequalities. If the expression is less than a, or the absolute value of u is less than a, then use in the interval negative a to a. That is, if the absolute value of u is less than a, if and only if, negative a is less than u less than a. If the absolute value of u is greater than a, then u is in the interval negative infinity to negative a, or a to infinity. That is, absolute value of u greater than a, if and only if, u is less than negative a, or greater than a. Now again, those inequalities less than and greater than can be replaced with less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, respectively. Now the big thing here you need to remember, you need to know which way the inequality faces. So if we look at example one. Solve the inequality algebraically, write the solution in the interval notation, and draw its number line graph. Well, this one says it's less than. So what we can do, negative 8 less than x minus 4 less than positive 8. This is a compound inequality. We're going to add 4 to all the parts here. So negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 12. So this solution can be written in a form. This will be an interval notation, negative 4 to 12. Now I do realize it looks like an ordered pair, but this is what they consider interval notation. Now to put this on this graph, here's what's going to happen. We're going to put 0 here, we're going to put 12 here, and we're going to put negative 4 here. It doesn't have to be perfect, I'm not asking for it to be perfect. On the negative 4, we'll put a parenthesis. On the 12, we'll put a parenthesis. And we'll shade in between. That's all you have to do. Now you can see that our picture looks the same way. Where is x minus 4 less than 8? Well, here is negative 4. There is negative 4. 12 will be out here. So you can see that our graph will be less than 8 in between negative 4 and positive 12. Moving on to part B. Here's what we're going to do. It's greater than here. So we're going to use the fact that it's the equation is less than the opposite and greater than what we have. So here's what's going to happen. So 2x minus 1 is less than negative 3.6. And 2x minus 1 is greater than 3.6. So when you solve this one, well, 2x is less than negative 2.6, which means x would be less than negative 1.3. And then also, when 2x is greater than 4.6, which means x would be greater than 2.3. Now when we put this on our graph here, what we're going to have then, we're going to put 0 in the middle, just like we did the last one. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Here's negative 3. So when we do this, x is less than negative 1.3. That will be about there. And we're going to shade less than that. And then greater than 2.3. There we have that. Now we can see that same thing on the graph like we did in example A. Here's what's going to happen. Where is it? The equation said where is it greater than 3.6? Well, here's where it's greater than 3.6 on the graph. You can see it by me coloring in blue. This point here is negative 1.3 for x. This point here is 
x equals 2.3 on the ground. Now, on example two, here's what's going to happen. To solve the inequality algebraically, write the solution in interval notation and draw its number line. Same idea. So here's what we're going to have. Because it's greater than or equal to 3x minus 2 would be less than or equal to negative 5, and 3x minus 2 would be greater than or equal to positive 5. Those are two different options, which means 3x would be less than or equal to negative 3, which means x would be less than or equal to negative 1. And then 3x would be greater or equal to 7. That means x would be greater or equal to 7 thirds, which is really 2 and a third. So in interval notation, this is what it will look like. Negative infinity to negative 1 in union with 7 thirds to infinity. Now to put this on a graph, here's what we'll do. Again, put 0. Here's negative 1. Here's 3. Now instead of parentheses like we had before, we're actually going to use brackets. There's brackets there. And then 2 and a third will go right here. And there's your graph on interval notation. Now moving on to B. Again, it's greater than or equal to, so x plus 2 over 3 will be less than or equal to negative 3, and x plus 2 over 3 will be greater than or equal to 3. Multiply both sides by 3, and subtract 2. So right now, your solution would be x is less than or equal to 11, and x is greater than or equal to 7. So to put that in interval notation, we have this. And just remember, the brackets you're including in parentheses are not. Infinity and negative infinity, you will never include those. Now to put this on your number line, we'll have 0 here. That looks like a good place for 7. There looks like a good place for negative 11. A bracket on negative 11, draw an arrow. A bracket on 7, draw an arrow. To solve a quadratic inequality such as x squared minus x minus 12 is greater than 0, we begin by solving the corresponding quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to 0. Then we determine the values of x for which the graph of y equals x squared minus x minus 12 lies above the x-axis. So the big thing here, we need to find our zeros of the quadratic equation. So when you look at a, solve the inequality. So I want to solve this first, x squared minus x minus 12. We should all know that two factors of negative 12 that give you negative 1 will be negative 4 and positive 3. That means your zeros will be 4 and negative 3. These are going to be your critical points. So when we look at our graph then, here's what we're going to have. Here's negative 3. Here's positive 4. Where is it greater than zero? Well, it's greater than zero here and here. So that means our solution will be negative infinity to negative three, not including negative three because it doesn't mean it's not greater than or equal to, in union with four to infinity. Now working on the same one with B. We want to bring the 15 over to the other side. Now, is this factorable? Well, 
are there two factors of negative 30 that give you positive 7? Well, that will be positive 10 and negative 3. So we can factor this. The only two factors of 2x squared are 2x x. Now in order to get 15, what we're going to need to do, we need to get 10 and 3, so we're going to do 5. So plus 5 and a minus 3. That means your zeros will be 3 over 2 and negative 5. Well, Here's negative 5. Here's 3 over 2. Where is this greater than 0? Well, it's greater than 0 here and there. So our answer, negative infinity to negative 5 in union with 3 halves to infinity. Now, don't worry about not being able to draw the infinity sign. I've been doing it for 15, 16 years, almost half my life. So, you'll get used to it, you'll get better at it. Moving on to example four. This says less than. So, again, we're going to move the 20 over. Now we're going to factor this. Are there two factors of negative 40 that give you 3? Well, there should be. It'll be positive 8 and negative 5. Again, our only options for 2x squared are 2x next. In order to get 8, 2 times 4 is 8 and a negative 5. That means my zeros will be 5 halves and negative 4. Well, the equation says, here's negative 4, here's 5 halves. Where is this less than 0? Well, it's less than 0 below the x-axis. So my answer will be bracket negative 4 to 5 halves. I'm using brackets there because it is less than or equal to. Now looking at B, we have 2 minus 5x minus 3x squared. So what we can do here, I'm going to multiply everything by a negative 1. And when you do that, you are switching the inequality sign. Remember, remember when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to switch the inequality sign. Now what we're going to do here is this factor rule under two factors of negative 6 that give you positive 5? Well, sure, it's going to be positive 6 and negative 1. So what we'll have 3x and x. And we'll have, we need to get 6. 3 times 2 is 6. We'll have a negative 1 here. This means my zeros. will be one-third and negative two. Here's negative two. There's one-third. Where is it less? What's well, less in between those? We are not including it. So negative two to one-third is your answer in interval notation. 